have the same money as they had 10 years ago. When we look at the main areas, the kindergartens and the early levels, they, if you look at the, the budget they have today and the budget they had 10 years ago, they've been regulated slightly for inflation. My name is uh, Anja Holtberg. I work here in the Copenhagen House of Food with the Organic Project, which is uh, basically turning all the 900 public kitchens in Copenhagen 90% organic. When this project started 10 years ago, well, of course, there was 0% organic in Copenhagen in 2001, and now we're at 76%. What's really amazing, it's not only the organic, uh, more organic food coming into the kitchens, it's also better food and happier people and uh, happier eaters, uh, because, because through the process of going organic, we're addressing so many other uh, issues. Spørg om, hvor lang tid du har været her. Ja, hvor længe har jeg været her? For, for efteråret. Hvad har du tid, ikke? Jo. Bodil uh, comes here at uh, daycare, uh, and comes here uh, because of the good food. Yes. <laughs> because yes. it was uh, important for me to get high quality in the kitchen, because I like good food myself, and I think while the food is good, and... Uh, tastes good, uh, the, pe- the people or the patients, as you call them, they eat it and they are very strong and healthy here. And the first years I was here, we have some kitchen workers who ha- ha- had another education. Uh, they were kitchen assistants um, and they were not very good to make uh, well-tasting food. And then I employed some chefs instead and that changed everything. We were very fast at about 70%, uh, because if we bake our own bread, it's very much cheaper. And we buy uh, uh, whole vegetables, whole animals, and uh, cut it ourselves. My name is Jonas, I work in the kitchen. We make a lot of different things. Now we got a whole pig, and I just cut it out for different things. We make yeah, all, all things ourselves. I think about organic food that is it should be by law. Uh, everything else should, should be forbidden. The main difference what's going on in our kitchens is when people start to cook food themselves. They stop uh, pouring frozen food out of a plastic bag and they actually start chopping up their own vegetables and chopping up, up their own meat and cooking and seasoning and, and thinking the food themselves, creating the food themselves. It gives them a much higher level of... of um, Uh, of sense of accomplishment. They've made the food, so they can be proud of what they've done. And I think it, it's, do, it's doing something for the pride in the kitchens, for the professional satisfaction. I, I'm someone because I can do this. And it's also, it's, it's changing the whole agenda around public food. In Denmark, it's considered, public food is generally con- considered to be awful. And that's not the way it is in Copenhagen anymore. So it's a whole, it's a culture change. And for the people who are eating the food, it's, it's making a huge difference. We can tell from, from, especially from places where people have no other food to eat. They have no options. It's not, it's not like, like they can go out and do something else. They, they're eating there every day, every meal, every single day. Uh, we, can, we can see that it's making a huge difference when, when the quality of the food, uh, the quality of the meals, uh, and the variation and the, the, the creativity that goes into the meal, when we improve that, it, it improves their general quality of life. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge factor, I think, in, in many people's lives. Uh, for instance, we have lots of people working just in Copenhagen who, are, who don't perceive themselves as being part of the food industry. They're working as nurses, or they're working as kindergarten teachers, or they're working at elderly homes. They're serving the meals, and but they don't think of that as their as as them being part of the food. They've just been accustomed to getting, you know, planning their menus from from inside their heads instead of planning them from from the vegetable list from your greengrocer. So so in the beginning they will be frustrated, but then at some point it would flip over, and they will actually you start seeing. The limits you see them actually as enhancing your creativity. In our minds, the way that we look at it, there's two ways. If you want to have organic food in your kitchen, you can either substitute, and then you will end up having a cost of 20-25% increase. If you go and say, I want to have 25% more on my budget next year and next year and forever because I want to go organic, they would just laugh at you. So the method that we're using is that we're, we're going 90% organic within the same budget. So you, you can't spend any more. You have to stay within your existing budget, providing, of course, that that's a reasonable budget.
Supplying uh, the market with organic food is a part of my job. In 2011, we did uh, a new tender and we did it for all the kindergartens and uh, all the places for the disabled persons and uh, all the elderly care. So we did like one big tender. And sometimes we uh, go into uh, partnerships. We have a partnerships called Green Cities and uh, they set goals and the politicians, they are also together with these partnerships and then they set goals that example the 90% in 2015, then we have to work towards that. I also see that tenders can also be used uh, as a good thing because I say I plan my tenders like a year ahead or two years ahead, uh, saying that we want this and the market can respond and also the market can say yeah but maybe you have this demand but if, if you um, change your demand a little bit then it's better for us. I would really love to be able to ask for more sustainable food in my tenders. One of my key points was that what is sustainable food? Mm -hmm. We need, uh, in, in my chair, uh, that is uh, the, the, um, the tender, doing the tenders, the supply uh, contracts, is that we need uh, to have a more uh, clear definition of what is sustainability in food. In 2015, when we will have reached the goal of 90% organic in Copenhagen, uh, I don't think that will be the end of the work that's going on in Copenhagen because we will we will still have lots of work to do with the quality of the food and with, with the skills of the people who are cooking. Uh, also new people who are coming in will have to train them. Uh, but but uh, I think it will be a great platform when our food is 90% organic. It will be a great platform for, for working with all the other aspects of food, such as food education, uh, what we're calling food bildung, with, with the German word, how we teach children how to be good eaters and to not be scared of all these different foods and so on. Uh, I think organic is just a platform for that. When you go to seventh grade, you are allowed to leave the school. In Copenhagen, there is terrible food shops all over your scene. It's, the market is really bad. So if they can go out and grab some food in the street and come to the school, it, it gives them respect because they are older, they can do that. So we want to try to catch those big kids and give them some proper food. And we talk a lot about food building and we want to educate the kids in this. And this is the best solution. There's two, two uh, chefs there that work there all day. They have about eight or ten kids down helping them. They are grabbing the food, making the food, and they are serving the food. They are announcing what they have to eat. And I went out there and the uh, last time I saw the hall was all of them was eating fried herring. It's really got a special taste, but they were all eating it and they were all enjoying it. I will never in the other system we have make fried herring because no one will eat it. But they were doing it there because it was their, their best friend who has made it and the best friend said, oh, I made this, it's really good. So we made this plan for the school where the day's menu are there's all the settings on the ovens, there's the timetable, and they have everything is in this timetable. So even a, a non-educated chef can do this. This way you have like a safety net under you. Then we have the normal recommendations. It's 30% uh, uh, fat, 15% uh, protein, and 55% carbohydrates. That is over the week. So we have two menus and every day there's two courses they can choose from. We have to brand it just as hard as uh, Burger King or McDonald's. We have to make our own brand. We have to call it EAT. This is Danish, uh, only is like uh, a slang word. EAT or EAT Copenhagen or BEAT IT or EAT UP and stuff like that. 
We have to make this cool, we have to make it something you want to eat. My, my own personal uh, take on organic food is uh, it's really the only way. I understand that there are some people that have their weary ways about it. And if I didn't have organic ingredients in my kitchen, I'd be able to save a lot of money. That's for sure. But um, I can't help but think about what kind of chemicals and all kinds of things that I wouldn't be aware, even aware of, I'd be putting into my body. On a daily basis, I make food for the 240 children that are here. We make everything from scratch, everything that's uh, everything is possible, uh, our own yogurts and breads, and uh, uh, we don't use any sugar. We uh, focus on vegetables and fruits and seasonality. A typical week in the kitchen and for the, the food that we serve here, we have one day that's a meat day, we have one day that's a fish day, we have a vegetarian day, we have a soup day, and we have a porridge day. The children really like the porridge as well. And it's something that helps with the economy of being able to keep our budget in the kitchen. The children do help uh, in with the food of making the food it can be anything from peeling po potatoes or carrots or cutting small uh cucumbers to anything and it's really not so much uh what they're doing but they get um they get a good feel of what happens down in the kitchen and they can see that what goes into some of the things just a few blocks away up the street from Mati and we have there's a huge area of uh, a green field where we have three long gardens which uh, will start here um, about the first of May and uh, do some planting out there we did it last year where we really used a lot of time out there and it was fantastic the kids got so much out of it it's beautiful to incorporate nature into our daily life and, and food as a plus. It's wonderful. Hi, my name is Mikkel. I'm working in the kitchen here. I've been working here for a month. The organic, I like to work with it because I think it's more tasty and more healthy. It's a, it's a big privilege to, to work with organic food. When you have to start to cook with the organic food, of course, you cannot uh, use the same amount of, uh, of products. You have to think much different. And that's what I think is very challenging. Every time you have a product, potato, orange, cauliflower, whatever it is, we say, okay, how much can we get out of this? How much can we use from this one? Apples, we use 100%. We have, again, to be very um, uh, challenging with ourselves and find new ways of, mm -hmm. of using these uh, vegetables or, or whatever it comes. I've been working in many various countries in my career. When you have been abroad, you have a lot of uh, experience how to cook and how to do things. And uh, if I look back to Bulgaria, but the staff kitchen was actually the best kitchen in the whole hotel because that's where they produced the local food. The, the taste and the, the structure and the was so nice there. The products in Turkey, they are actually biological, made. Mm. They just don't uh, sell them as biological, but they are because they come from small farmers everywhere, you know, in the country. Mm -hmm. And now they know, now there's a business, but it's, I'm talking about 20 years or 25 years ago. So when you, when you bought food on the market, also in Bulgaria, it was mainly biological. It's not only to be organic. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you buy, uh, Again, let's take the strawberries, the organic strawberries from, uh, from Egypt or the, the spring onions in the winter from Thailand. Or For me, that's not uh, organic. It can be an organic product, but uh, then you have to think about also this, uh, the clima, the CO2. What mm -hmm. does it take to bring you the, the food here? So think local and find uh, it's a challenge again. Mm -hmm.